uh, right now, I want us to jump into our events of the week segment. And uh, joining me here on the show, I have Honorable John Mutunga, who's the MP for Tigania West. Karibu sana to the show. Uh, it's great to have you here. Thank you very much. We appreciate you making the time. And okay. sijika unataka kusalimia watu wako kwanza wa Tigania West. Hopefully <laughs> they, are watch, they are watching. Nisalimia watu wa Tigania West. Ni wangeni kwa leo ni kwa Switch TV. Tunaongelea mambo. Exactly. Tunaongelea like so ya, ya ruro. Tunaongelea mambo ya full circle. Full circle. Saku, saku, kwa kimi, kwa kiswahili zaza di, 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 viringo. <laughs> ya tunongea mambo mengi kuhusu current affairs ama yale ya litokea. Naam. Ibi majusi. Naam, naam. Yeah. Thank you once again for your time. And uh, we're going to jump straight into it, uh, into uh, just looking at some of the different changes that have been taking place within the Jubilee Party. That has obviously been making a lot of headlines. Um, last week or so, we saw Senator Murkomen coming out to say, or even this week, that his ouster had nothing to do with loyalty or the rule of law, but a succession war. And he claims someone is taking advantage of this coronavirus crisis to settle some personal political scores. Do you agree with him? Is the president sort of taking <laughs> advantage of this crisis? Uh, well, partly, um, looking at what's happening right now across the world, everybody is a lot more focused on the coronavirus pandemic and ways and means of making sure that it doesn't spread, it doesn't have the kind of impact it has had in some countries. And countries that we believe are a lot more prepared, are a lot more prepared than we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, w the, the, the general news, when you go to BBC, you go to CNN, you go to, it's about Corona, the control, the impact, the deaths and all that. In Kenya, Corona is secondary or tertiary, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, we have many other issues coming up. If you look, if you scan the papers, you see different things are as if nothing is happening. And then every, um, people are questioning what is our really, for what's our priority here? Mm -hmm. Is it that we want to uh, assume we are in total control of corona and now we can do other things? That is the reason why I believe Mokomeni was saying somebody is taking advantage of the coronavirus. Mm. And I want to say it in, the, in, in my understanding, in my view, uh, I'll give you three reasons. One, everybody is supposed to keep social distance. Mm -hmm. So you cannot convene people and tell them what is happening. <laughs> Secondly, uh, they are, they are, they are, uh, even, even, even if it means defending yourself, yeah. you can only defend yourself in such a place or maybe to the media when you are very few. And you may not also not feel like defending yourself at a time when people are mourning. People are dying, people are getting sick. sick. There's a lot of, you know, um, a follow up, especially those who have been affected. We are affected and the chains are long and the details are too complicated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so people are worried. Uh, so, that, I think, is the second reason why uh, more commonly believes or feels that somebody is taking advantage of this period. Mm -hmm. The third thing is the speed at which things are happening vis-a-vis -vis the extension of the times and, of course, the figures that are coming out now. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, you've read something about Hopkins, looking at the stars and making sense. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were very young, you we used to sing little, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Scar, yeah. How I Wonder. What oh, you, sure. I think what you should be wondering is how I wonder why you remain where you are and mm. how I can reach there and try to understand a lot more. I think looking at the vision of success of, 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 of controlling coronavirus, uh, it shouldn't be all effort, all, 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 all resources, all you know, capabilities. This is a disaster. In yeah. fact, it's a pandemic. You yeah. cannot even be assisted a lot by other countries. Even yeah. if they do assist you, they'll give you a loan, which mm -hmm. means they are and abandoning you. Trouble. Of course, you have loans already. Yeah. So they are, they are taking advantage to give us a little bit more burden. And I think so that is exactly why it feels mm. shortchanged okay. at the wrong time. I think it is the choice of the timing, in my very considered opinion, is wrong. Right. Yeah. And there's many other things that have been coming out in this season that is leaving Kenyans very puzzled. Like, mm. why are we paying attention to this? We're starting to hear bubbles of, you know, BBI, yeah. you know, yeah. arrangements there are and so many things. coming up. In this season, we're seeing people being evicted from their homes at a time like this one. Uh, not even just evicted, but having their belongings and things trashed down to the ground. Um, and a lot of Kenyans are really wondering who is standing up for us and who is speaking out for us. And as the Member of Parliament for Tigania West, maybe this is an opportunity for you as well to just sort of talk about who is supposed to be driving this cause as far as managing corona. 
you know, because many people are asking, where is our MP? What are they doing? Where is our women's rep? What are they doing? Where is the senator? Mm. The coronavirus being a pandemic is a national event. It's a national issue. It's an ongoing and, uh, and it's an increasing, <laughs> it's increasing in magnitude, it's increasing in the, in the, the levels of intensity. And we need to have very concerted efforts. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody's thinking about it. When you tell people to be very serious about uh, keeping distances, washing their hands, and all those other things, and then we seem to be playing other games, mm -hmm. I think they don't take us very seriously. This is the time to actually reflect on what should be done and engage our efforts. Uh, why I'm saying engage our efforts, you look at who is actually involved in the uh, containment of corona, mm -hmm. you realize that a lot more of the executive is involved. And then there is also now the relationship between the national government and the county government. The county governments are also involved. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the members of parliament, they are fairly not involved. Maybe to pass legislation and legitimize some of the propositions made mm -hmm. as decisions to contain corona. Mm -hmm. So um, what I would expect is that all of us should have a role to play. Everybody should have a role to play. We should be, there should be a level of engagement that that delivers, aims at delivering positive results, aims at as, as declaring impact to the people to be able to understand exactly why, and also enabling our people to be prepared and right. to be able to protect themselves. If you go across the country, you realize that uh, more than 85% of the people do not have masks. <laughs> they do not therefore wear them. Mm -hmm. So we are just having some of these things happening in the, in the, city, in the towns, in the, I mean, in uh, uh, urban centers and uh, marketplaces. But it's not in the rural. Are we saying that corona is not in the rural? Right now we have cases everywhere, like in Meru. We didn't have cases, but this week we have had already two cases. So, so uh, as a member of on. parliament, what are some of the things that you want to see done? Because you're saying this uh, is really a function of the national government. One of the things that I would like to see done is real effort into ensuring our people are protected. And real effort into ensuring that there is, there is complete preparedness. If you have health centers and dispensaries which do not have the PPEs, for instance, uh, then you are not prepared. So supposing they are confronted by a case of corona, do they run away? Mm -hmm. Or do they just go about treating this person and risk being uh, infected themselves? Mm -hmm. So we need to ensure that we are we are having proper equipment. We are, we have we have set up facilities for you know if it is a, if it is a quarantine and so on. That has been done to a certain extent. And I think the the, the committee started by declaring the capacities that we have, the levels of uh, you know uh, preparedness we were in, and you realize we had so many. Uh, I see you so many uh, <laughs> the, the the oxygen, you know, uh, they are called respirators and so on and mm -hmm. so forth, and that looked very, very low in as far as the country is concerned. Okay. So those are the things that we should be doing now. Okay. The other thing I would like to see is for support to the local manufacturing of some of these things. Why? Because should Corona escalate everywhere and should it really be a major issue? Many other countries will not focus on other nationals. They will focus on their own. Mm -hmm. Importation will not be, will be an issue. So mm -hmm. this is the time to, uh, to make sure that we devise our own right. and support our own. Okay. Like the respect that's uh, invented by the scientists in KU should have been improved and you know, multiplied. Yeah. If it is working, why not? Yeah. Uh, if, we, if we actually focus on the near vehicles, we could now be driving, driving Kenyan cars. Okay. But then we are, very, we are a lot more bent on importation. So what I'm saying is that we need to have a lot of effort on the ground to make sure people are actually, you know, doing what we say they should do, mm. facilitating them to do what we say they should do. Okay. Ensuring that wherever there is no water, the water is, you know, fixed. Mm -hmm. Ensuring that they have must ensuring that uh, we, we have levels of preparedness at the institutions that are set up to contain yeah. corona. And it's interesting you raise that because, you know, counties are said to have forwarded to the Ministry of Health the number of community health volunteers in their areas. Uh, who um, do not have. Who do not have. And uh, these are volunteers actually missing out on safety kits. Yes. If, volunteer, if anybody in the medical line who can get into contact with a corona case at the moment, it doesn't have the PPE, we have failed. Mm. Because we can't say that it will take forever to prepare. What are we preparing? W corona is an unseen monster. It's here with us. Yeah. It's anyway, it's in the air. Adapt if it's in the that. air, then how, when, how would it take a long time to prepare? I think what we should have done is be very thorough uh, in, 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 the, in the crisis. We make it a crisis response. In a crisis response, you move into a crisis mode. Mm. And then you, 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 you activate every effort mm -hmm. to make sure that you are properly ready. 
So right now, I think in uh, main, main just, I can't even be very confident that Nairobi is prepared. And okay. as you mentioned, this is the wrong time again to try and evict anyone. Yeah. When you're telling people keep safe, and then you remove them from their dwelling units. To sleep outside. Irrespective of whatever it is, what is more important? Isn't it life? I don't know what we are doing. I think there is a lot of confusion in this country, Absolutely. which needs to be sorted out. Well, speaking, and it can only be sorted yeah. out if leaders listen to each other. There's no one who is a superhuman. We need to listen to each other. I, I'm glad you're bringing that up, Honorable, because speaking of confusion, there's been quite a bit of confusion. It's a total confusion. But in your own party as well. And when we come back from the break... We are busy destroying <laughs> our party. I want to... <laughs> it's you who said it. I want us to talk about that. And just talk about some of the confusion that we're seeing within the Jubilee Party. And I think uh, we enjoy confusion. Oh, dear. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to be addressing that when we come back. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. Also talks about, you know, a loan from the World Bank. I want to uh, get... Uh, our MPs are sentiments on that as well. Stay tuned. This is Full Circle with Joyce. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I'm here with Honorable John Mutunga, who's the MP for Tigania West. And he actually is an old boy of Chagoria Boys. So uh, if you're watching for, or if you're a student from there, even Yeri, was it Yeri High School? Yeri yes. High School as yeah, well, yeah. Yes. So if you're watching <laughs> and that's your school, you can shout him out as well on double two triple nine. But um, we're, we're talking about events of the week. And before we went on break, you were very passionately saying about how this, this seems to be a lot of confusion fusion in our different leadership spaces mm -hmm. in the country today mm -hmm. yes. and um, one of them has has really been in the ruling party for to be honest with ourselves there's yeah. there's been a lot of drama a lot of yeah. infighting what yeah. is happening I, I tend to think that uh, well let me say that the party has a very strong constitution really a powerful document that we all believe in which even has a party uh, a party democracy statement which basically says that Everything within the party will be conducted democratically. We shall observe the rights and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and the, uh, the responsibilities of everyone. We shall be able to uh, convene the relevant organs of the party. Decisions will be made in structured manner. Everything. Mm -hmm. Very perf perfect document. Uh, the party has not had, since we had the election in 2017, first of all, there has not been election within the party. Mm -hmm. So that's something that has been pending, and it was supposed to have happened, I think, in March. Secondly, we've not had meetings of the governance organs of the party, none. The only meeting we had was immediately we were elected at State House, which was a parliamentary group meeting, which could be a quasi uh, organ, which is not really recognized by the party. Mm -hmm. uh, the party has a, the, the party supreme organ is what, what is called the National Convention. National Convention has never met. Uh, the second organ, which basically is the, the one that basically ratifies, may, looks, looks through the decisions made by the ne National Executive Committee, is what we call the, 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 the executive, I mean, the, the National uh, the Governing Council. The Governing Council has never met. The National uh, uh, Convention has never met. The National Executive Committee has never met. And the National Executive Committee is the one, the handler, the one that does this to them, uh, 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 functions of the party. It implements uh, uh, the, the various uh, roles and responsibilities as assigned. Mm. Does turn over the functions into results within the party. So with the governance organs of, organs of the party not meeting, then the party has not made any legitimate decision in our very considered opinion as members. Mm -hmm. So if the party has not made any legitimate decision, one of the decisions that the National Executive Com Committee is supposed to make is elect or rather select or identify and, and commission a, a, a negotiation committee at, at, the, at, at a team of around five to talk to any party that we may probably need to have a post-election coalition with. Mm -hmm. The party is in a coalition right now, and that, you, uh, that has never you been are not done. Privy to that this, partic this particular, this particular five-man <laughs> committee, which is supposed to negotiation committee, should, uh, should represent the report to the National Executive Committee. Which was which never occurred, and then the national executive committee makes a decision which transfers the national governing organ. <laughs> so all those things have not happened, but we see things happening in the party, and that yeah. is one of the things that is causing confusion. The okay. other thing that is causing causing confusion is the silence within the party. Of course, if there is no convention, 
of any nature, you are not able to talk to, to yourselves, to, 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 to each other. Then you are not able to move forward in a you know, organized manner. Then there was this promise we got on the first meeting at State House. Then the end of the, end, the, 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 end of, uh, the party leader did tell, give us the assurance that we can raise all issues concerning the party and there will be no form of intimidation, there will be no form of, uh, you, no, no one will, will, will be victimized. Right. This was Mat back in There will be no victimization of any nature. And this was That's back what in 2017. Believe. He has never come back to tell us that that position is changed. So we believe that. And I think it's good to tell the president, that's what we believe. Okay. That's why where we are. So when you see anything else happening, we get very confused. So as a member in this party, I mean, of this party, what then, what's next for you? You're saying meetings have not been taking place. Your voices not seem not to be getting heard. We what's hear, next? We hear pronouncements from other people like, you know, the vice chairman of the party and then the secretary general who are not... Secretary general has no position. The secretary general is supposed to be the handler. He's supposed to coordinate. He's, supposed, he's the CEO. CEOs normally do not take positions. They are ex officios in most cases. Mm -hmm. And even in this particular case, the CEO should be playing that particular role. But you can see a CEO writing disciplinary letters to members of parliament and show cause why you should not be disciplined, like those ladies who have already been given show cause letters. We can see him doing other things and making serious pronouncements and undermining even people who are senior to him in the hierarchy of the party. He's okay. number seven in the hierarchy, but he's undermining like number two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we get very surprised mm -hmm. and we also get concerned what is happening within this party which has a, a democracy statement. What do, what do you mean? Democracy means there's a party constitution, at the other the party constitution itself, there's a national constitution. And the national, national constitution has provisions. Article 10, 3, clearly specifies that we need to be, we, we need to, to have issues, it gives details on issues of, issues of inclusiveness, issues of uh, respect for, pos for, for position and so on. When you look at Article 33, basically it also talks about the same. The Bill of Rights is very clear. So what's Article the 35 for you? talks about the truthfulness of that 5.2 specifically sure. discusses the truth, the, the correctness of the information that we should be giving people. When we give people information that is not correct yeah. and they are entitled to the correct version of information, then we are, we are misleading. So what, what's everyone. the way forward for you though? Because certainly when you look at the sort of confusion that there is in the, in the ruling party, it's, then you have to wonder about the, the national <laughs> leadership I as well. I tell you, the, the levels of escalation are very high. We, that's the party with very many factions already. We have Kieleweke, which, is, which I don't know what it means. For me, Gitaile Wagasikumoja. Then we have Tanga Tanga, which also is another faction. We have people who are embracing. We have Winuama. We have so many things within that party. <laughs> the party is sick. It needs a little bit of healing. And the only way is to convene the party members. Okay. Let's convince the organs of the party and let's discuss. Let the spirit, what be the spirit of openness and, you know, uh, the, the airing issues with, with a lot of confidence. Where did it go? Let's talk about leadership in general in this country, because I think one of the things that many Kenyans are, are, are pointing out is just the lack of value-based leadership in this country and servant-based leadership. Actually, Article 10, 3 talks about national values mm -hmm. and some of the values that we are, we are is the values like integrity, inclusivity, we are not having those values anymore. Yeah. And that is, that is where... We're very good at writing things down, but not practicing them. But we shouldn't practice. Why did we adopt that constitution? Why did we take so long to do that constitution? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we should be able to f ask ourselves why we cannot and uh, live to the values. Um, let's talk about the country now, L moving away from Jubilee just for a little bit. Um, there seem to be glaring errors in the results of the August 8th, 2017 general election uh, published on the website of the IEBC, which have kicked up a storm now with leaders calling for a reorganization of the commission before the proposed referendum and 2022 general election. Yes. I want to ask you about this because considering what 2020 has been, the sort of challenges we're now faced, we have debt, you know, spewing out of our ears and our nostrils as a country, mm. yet there's still bubbles and fununu, mm. yeah, referendum, mm. and then 2022. Yes. Is, what's your assessment as far as where we need to be before that general election? First of all, I would like to say that uh, the IBC deliberately posted those results. That data was posted. The statistics were posted by IBC deliberately into their website. Then the errors were clear and glaring. Some of them 
quite interesting because they presuppose that people are sitting in parliament who are not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And that is very serious. And these people have got certificates signed by the returning officers on the day they were declared winners. Mm -hmm. And there was a process of declaration of the winners. So that one is a, is a serious issue. And I, I would imagine that, uh, I would imagine that the, col the failure to use the electronic system and of course abandoning or keeping it, uh, keeping it assigned and probably going manual all through could have brought in some of these errors. Mm -hmm. However, I would imagine that however few, because I understand there are three commissioners, and I don't know, the CEO is also not there, and I think there's, uh, there's, uh, there's quite a lot of issues. Is that confusion, which is, you know, Kenya, I think, enjoys a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we are. We are as a people and as a state. We like being in confusion. That confusion is what has led to um, some of those errors being posted on the website. Mm. They have portrayed the wrong message. And anybody who would not trust IABC anymore to conduct even a by election because we would not know whether they would count correctly or whether mm. they would post the correct. Mm. And you see, many people really are doubting whether what, what was given out mm. uh, is correct. But I would like to imagine that maybe just as I did, I had my own telling centers. Okay. So, telling center. so I could get results as announced in every polling station okay. on that particular day. So my tallies really tied up with the tallies uh, at, the, at the main telling center, the constituency. So I believe everybody should have done that and people know okay. actually what votes they, they had. Crossing over borders just slightly now, let's talk about Kenya and Tanzania and this COVID-19 testing row uh, that's bringing in a lot of uh, propaganda. The coronavirus testing row between Kenya and Tanzania gets worse with retaliatory, retaliatory politics and propaganda now creeping in. Is there a diplomatic <laughs> role sort of looming between these two countries? Of course, this is not the first time Kenya is having a tuffle with, with Tanzania. It's really Tanzania, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen how it passed by uh, some of the regional governors, especially those ones around the border, and making very tough statements, especially from the other side. Ours have been quiet, <laughs> uh, but we are the first to make a decision not to allow, to disallow the drivers from the other end. And it was out of, of course, the findings of the tests that were conducted right. that the greater majority of the drivers were infected. Uh, I do not want to comment on the uh, how Tanzania is handling its uh, COVID-19 uh, um, process. I don't know. I don't comment on that. Mm -hmm. But coming back to uh, whether we have uh, a, a, a diplomatic problem at all, um, I would like to say that um, uh, I believe, according to the statement made by Magufuli yesterday, and the fact that he claimed to have, or rather he, he said that he had already, they had already spoken with our president, mm -hmm. there's a possibility that it can be contained. And the only way to contain it is to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Let the people be tested. If you are sick, be, current, be, be treated. Mm -hmm. And you see, if you have to keep drivers at the border for a very long time, unfortunately again, uh, because some of them are carrying pressure bars, we get a lot of pressure, pressure bars from Tanzania. The trade, trading, trade, trade between Kenya and, and, and Tanzania is by the people. It is initiated by the people of Kenya and people of Tanzania. Mm. Naturally, people of Tanzania around uh, Morogoro, uh, I mean, the, around the, the Mount Meru region, they normally produce a lot for us, mm. and even the Moshi uh, area. They produce a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits, and a lot of those other, you know, uh, food foodstuffs, and then they sell them in the Nairobi market. Mm -hmm. Nairobi is a lot nearer than Dar es Salaam for yeah. them. Secondly, the Kenyan, Kenyans find it cheaper to buy from there and sell here, like the onions, the oranges, and so on. And uh, first of all, we shall, as a country, we shall suffer some, some drawback because uh, the prices will escalate as a result of short scarcity. And secondly, uh, we will also be uh, spoiling the relationships, a natural relationship created by people over time. Right. So I believe uh, it should be contained quite early. It can lead yeah. to huge mm -hmm. diplomatic issues because if you hear the pronouncement by one of the governors who said, that they will disallow any Kenyan driver to cross the, 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 mm. the, the Tanzanian country, and they will allow all the others from the other countries to be crossing. That's already discriminatory, and we, we find it a little bit uncomfortable in the in the in the in the, in the yeah I, I, with res reference to ESC yeah, uh, yeah. common market protocol. A shame though that we still have to import onions though from from Tanzania. Oh, uh, it is. That's, uh, that, yeah, that one we we'll discuss another day. It's another day. Yeah, I that am an one Greek. We'll I can I can uh, tell you many more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, still on Corona, there's very disturbing uh, reports there from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics claiming um, that now coronavirus is, is seemingly 
more lethal the effects of it are more lethal on women's livelihoods with almost half of them being rendered jobless because of this pandemic unemployment is now up to four million people here in kenya and you have to remember one of the biggest promises from again you know the ruling party your your party was about youth empowerment employment and the creation of jobs and yet i think we're still we're still waiting you know almost eight years been creating yeah, a few. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well how many in relation to, there's been a lot of promises that have not been kept but now to, to see something like women's livelihoods being the greatest at risk also knowing the number of single parent homes in this country the ripple effects are going to be magnanimous I think the impact is a lot more of, on women based on the nature of jobs that women take. Women take more organized, more structured, more formal jobs than the men who take in formal jobs most of the times. Uh, well, I would, uh, when, when there was lockdown, first of all, uh, most of the families told the house girls to leave, those who assist in the houses. So all of them were kept aside because now it's a family. Mm -hmm. This is about survival. It's not about having somebody who take a break on Sundays and come back. We don't know where you go and mm -hmm. whether where you go, you might have corona, you might bring back corona. Mm -hmm. So to be secure, that category of job was left. Then there was the issue of working from home. Not many people can work from home. Yeah. People will work from mm -hmm. their uh, 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 workplaces. And then the, 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 engage, the nature of engagements, which are a lot more formal, let me say, for the women, because the women will always take something that is long term, longer term, sustainable. They don't want to take risks a lot. And uh, the kind of jobs they are more or less, they have more or less been structured in that kind of way. And I think that is why most of them are impacted as much. But you the men, uh, they take casual jobs. And you see, also, it, we, we, we need to deliver the definition of a job in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, we, what, what kind of jobs are we talking about? Mm -hmm. Because when, even when we create casual jobs, you're still saying we are creating so many jobs. Yeah. So I think what you need is to focus on how can we stabilize the job creation uh, mechanism in this particular country. How can we initiate it? Because we're not convinced it's even being stabilized. There are no is, jobs that it we're is, seeing. It is very easy. It is where we focus. Where do we put our money? Uh -huh. I am in the budget committee yes. of parliament and I can tell you that most of our money does not go to productive sectors. And I have in mind sectors like agriculture, mining and where so on. Where is it going? Uh, it goes to others. We put a lot of money in education. Everybody is fr has free education. We put a lot of money in uh, medical care. While we know that if we did a lot of nutritional support, if we give people good food, yeah. would sh we would clear about half of the nutritional, right. I mean, the, of, of the medical you know, bills that we should, we, because most of them are nutritional related. Mm -hmm. So we are, we, our, our strategies are not very clear. Okay. Africa came up with uh, the African Union decree that every African country should put a minimum of 10% of the national budget to agriculture. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you need food and nutrition security. You need to also industrialize. And learning from other countries, Americas, Europe, and so on, they started with agriculture. Yeah. They did the very agriculture very well, secure. produced raw materials yeah. for industries, started with primary industries, then they moved on to uh, other extraction industries. As we are focusing on service sector and a few other things and putting in, and papa, we don't support agriculture. It doesn't reach 3% of but the But as a member budget. of that budget committee, w do you have a say then in, in, in employing I do, I do. I do speak very strongly, but you s only speak strongly to Treasury, which does not believe in, uh, in supporting agriculture, where the people are. In, a, in an economy, if you want an economy to grow, you give the greater rural. majority of the people possibility yeah. to contribute to the growth of that economy. So if we wanted to Kenyans to grow their economy, we would support agriculture, where 80, 70, 80% of the population is anchored. So if we don't do that, then we are messing up everything. There's no way service sector can support us. E the, the manufacturing sector has never exceeded 13% of GDP. Right. Agriculture, the way it is, on a good year when there is good rain, agriculture supports this country at that 4% of the GDP directly and 27 indirectly, 61%. Then we give it 2.7% of the budget. That's why we go wrong. We will never create jobs in this country. My goodness, Honorable Mutunga, clearly we need to carry on this conversation another day. And I think specifically even just to spend time talking about the I budget agree. and resource allocation in this exactly. country. I know a lot of our viewers, a lot of Kenyans yeah. have questions about that. Yeah. Unfortunately, my time is up. So I hope you'll join me another day. I'll be really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a break. Uh, thank you once again to Honorable Mutunga here from Tigania West for his time, the MP for Tigania West. And uh, coming up next, as we get ready to wrap up the show, we'll be joined by a young violinist and they'll be sharing a bit about their craft with us. Stay tuned. <laughs>